Highbrow, one of those really awesome Hunt for the Decepticons figures that was one of those that it's in the movie aesthetic, but it wasn't in the movie. One of those. And when I say one of those, I say it in a good way. Revenge of the Fallen and Hunt for the Decepticons brought us some really, really cool figures, and Highbrow is no exception. It's one that I was tracking down for years and years and always eluded me for a good price, and I finally found it for a really, really good price a while ago. But unfortunately, it wasn't complete. Uh, he doesn't have his guns, and unfortunately, he's missing you know, a couple little toe pieces. But it doesn't really detract from either mode too bad. Uh, hopefully, someday I can either find a scrap one with the toes, or I can just 3D print him some new ones. I want to get into that someday, so i got to have that in the back of my mind with certain things. Maybe I can 3D print him at some point. But anyways, love Highbrow. However, after I got him, I realized... Wasn't there a really cool repaint of them in that GDO line that came out at Toys R Us, like, around 2012 or so? Yes! Power Dive! Decepticon Power Dive! Love these guys. Love both of them. I finally got Power Dive a couple days ago. I found it at the toy department. I actually found this at the House of Plastic, by the way. So shout out to two local, uh, local toy shops. Thank you very much. Yeah, really awesome figures. Finally found Power Dive, and it was pretty much like modern day Voyager price, so I was like, why not just grab it? Uh, love it. Absolutely love both of these. If I had to pick a favorite, eh, well, you'll see at the end. You might pick up some hints as we go along. Love them both, though. They're really great. It's such an awesome mold, and since Hunt for the Decepticons was actually voted as one of the mo uh, one of the more great and popular toy lines in that big like Transformers toy line poll I did on my community tab a while ago, I wanted to make a video talking about a figure from Hunt for the Decepticons. We might go through and talk about more stuff from that line. What do you say? We might end up doing that. But let's talk about Highbrow and Power Dive today. So... I want to go over some of the basics of the mold first with Highbrow, because he was the first. He's the one that came out back in 2010, so he was a couple years before Power Dive. Really awesome figure. I love the look of him. Uh, it does have a couple quirks, and we'll talk about that, but overall, it's such an awesome figure. I love the colors on Highbrow. They're very realistic to something we would actually see from the kind of plane that he turns into. And before anyone mentions... I am not a World War II history fighter plane whatever expert. Uh, it's a cool looking plane. That's all I can contribute. If you want to go down in the comments, uh, I've heard that's a bit of a mix between a couple other planes. Uh, it, it's a cool plane. It's a cool plane. That's all I can contribute. Uh, but this one definitely seems to be the more faithful deco to something we would have actually seen back in the war. Uh, it's super cool when Hasbro makes, well, I should say made, they don't really do it anymore. Some of these... Uh, historical transformers that are you know original like olden day vehicles they don't they don't do it much anymore i kind of miss it yeah let, let's get into it number one you can see he's got propeller hands which is really cool it's a bit of a feature he can do where he can turn his hands into propellers they can be shields they can be weapons but you do have a gimmick uh, that works also in the plane mode where you hit the little engine blocks and they'll spin a uh, very clicky noise but hey it's something it does you can bring out a hand, and if I had the gun for highbrow, you know, I could have him hold it, but honestly, it's not the kind of figure where I feel like it's really missing anything without the gun. It really isn't, because uh, he still has some ranged weaponry with these missiles that are on his hips. You can swap these if you want them facing this way and being a little more flush to the robot, but they're facing backwards, so I personally kind of think they look a little better, just kind of flared out a little bit. But, again, you can have that as a bit of a shield if you want, or you can just kind of collapse it entirely. Just got to find the right configuration and just have him with normal arms. I do have to say, though, his arms are a little awkward. You can see they're always going to be sticking out to the side just a little bit, even with these flipped more flush. It's just the shaping of them. They're always going to be kind of jutting out in this weird direction. Because uh, if you have it all the way like this, number one, they look stubby, and number two, that's basically the vehicle mode configuration, and we're not really looking to do that. So, yeah, personally, I'm going to go with this look for at least highbrow. I think highbrow looks really cool in this look. I really dig it. Uh, so the sculpt's really nice. I love the integration of the landing gear into the chest. I think that works really well. I really like that. 
Uh, I do like the back, but I do have an issue with it. I like how this is almost like a thruster where it looks like he could be flying around with his thruster back here. And it's totally hidden in the vehicle mode. And I do like the look of this kind of wing, this wing look that's made out of the cockpit. But unfortunately, it doesn't tab in. It's just sitting there. So you're going to be banging those around and moving this whole configuration willy-nilly. And it's just, it's not going to look any good if you're giving this a bit of a rougher time while you're posing it around. So it looks nice, but it's not going to stay there too nice. Uh, that's pretty much all I want to really show with the highbrow robot mode, except for his head. Because his head is really cool. So it looks very auto body, looks very heroic. I really like the look of it. For the longest time, I thought he had these weird teeth, but literally just now I can kind of see where he has like a, a jawline, like a strap for the helmet, and then like a very classic lip. Like he has a very traditional Autobot mouth. I always saw it as like this weird skeletal jaw, but now I can see it a little more accurately as like a proper Autobot mouth. But it has a super cool flight cap that goes over and that just looks awesome absolutely awesome ah oh, man that's cool and it feels really faithful too this is such a faithful figure for what it's trying to achieve and i think it did a great job all right so next up power dive time i think these colors look very cool and very evil i really like them they are kind of based on g1 power dive so he's got some purple and some red on the go not the most faithful, not the most accurate, but look at that. He's got a shark. Ah, it's going to look so cool in the vehicle mode. One thing I do like, though, about him, I love his head sculpt. Uh, he does also have a similar flight cap thing going on, so you can lift that up, and it, it just looks really cool. His head kind of reminds me of Jolt a little bit, so it doesn't look like a very evil Decepticon-y head, but it still looks like a nice head. You know, it's a nice head. One thing I do like about this mold is that you can adjust the shoulders to have them either more streamlined or have a more sticky Audi. I kind of prefer more sticky Audi on Power Dive, but that's just me. Uh, again, it does have similar issues where the back doesn't really tab in or anything. Uh, but you can see on this how the toes really contribute to the look. I think the toes look really nice. Uh, so he also has the guns. They're just machine guns. You know, he can hold them. You can also put them on his hips if you want. I kind of like that if I want him to have the, the propeller blades of doom. But you can kind of position him a little bit. It's a little tricky. It's The gun kind of gets in the way of the big chunky arm. It's kind of a mess. But, you know, you can still give him the, the cool blades. Pop that on there and, you know, have it sticking out. That looks kind of neat. That's a neat look. But one thing I want to go over mostly with him is the articulation, since I covered a lot of the sculpt in detail with, uh, with highbrow. So head swivels around. That's pretty cool. Arms, they rotate, they go uh, up and down. They actually go up and down on two hinges, which is pretty cool. Uh, bicep swivel, uh, single jointed elbow, which actually goes pretty far. A few joints at the arms, I'll leave it at that. Nothing at the waist, but that's just for transformation. The hips are a little problematic because they are very clicky for pretty much no reason. So if you're trying to move the hips, you start to see he wants to split apart for the transformation. And that can be a bit of a problem. I feel like the hips are a little looser and better on my power dive than they are on highbrow. But that's a you know, difference from mold to mold. It does have a knee joint, which is really cool. I love the shaping on the leg, by the way. I really love that. I love how this kind of collapses and forms these vents along the side. But the feet are really nice. You get a tilt, you get downward, and you technically get some upward with the toes. So you can actually use those toes to give them like a bit of an upward. Then use this and kind of spread that out. And look at how poseable he look at how poseable this is. Like that is the toe articulation at play right there. He's standing. Look at that. That is really, really good. He's got some nice articulation from the waist down. Unfortunately, it's just a little hindered by the hips. And he could have used he could have used a, a waist swivel, but for the transformation, how this works, I can I can kind of excuse its absence because it's gonna get a little crazy. So I've pretty much talked about the robot mode. I love it. I love it on both figures. Uh, I think the Power Dive robot mode looks a little bit cooler, just to me, because I kind of like the more garish colors with the purple and the reds. Well, that's because I'm a giant robot guy. You know, I'm kind of used to that. But if you want something more realistic, definitely, definitely go for highbrow instead. But once we see the vehicle modes, 
I think both of these vehicles are really worth it. So let's let's transform let's transform him because he's more physically complete. So we'll we'll jump cut to highbrows vehicle mode. But let's transform power dive because uh, I like him a lot. All right. So his arms are gonna kind of collapse and do their thing. Uh, this is gonna be a mess. I'm sorry. You know how my transformations go. I treat it like a puzzle. So that will kind of collapse in on itself, and that's looking really cool right there. The legs, they're going to do some wild things. So get this, get this, break this up, and then we're good to cover the head with the shoulder pads. So that's looking cool. Then we'll kind of straighten the arms, and then we'll take these. Get those little winglets folded out. And then the hips will click in up there. And everything kind of aligns. And you can see we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. Main thing left are the legs. Take these panels. Flip them up. Tab them in. It's a pretty simplistic transformation for quite the, uh, quite the physical change. It's really neat. And then the awesome thing is the heels are going to flip out and combine with each other to form that connecting point at the back of the plane. And that is a sweet. Unfortunately, you can see where me missing the toes on highbrow, it's going to be missing these wings. So again, I might try to track down a, you know, a piece or just 3D, 3D print it at some point. All right, so we'll just flip these propellers out. And I personally, you know, you can put the, the guns on the wings but I think it looks really bad. So whenever I transform him, I just leave the, the guns off entirely. You can flip out the landing gear, which for our purposes will do. And there we go. There is Power Dive's really cool looking classic military plane mode. And uh, let's, let's get Highbrow transformed. Ah, oh, such a cool transformation. It's really fun. It's really fun transforming this mold. I love both these guys. I really do. The thing, though, is with Highbrow, it does this really cool thing where it's white underneath. That is cool. And it's also very accurate to a plane of this make. Because uh, obviously, you know, it wants to blend in with the sky above. So having it white underneath kind of makes sense. Having it green on the top, it blends in with the ground below. You know, it's, it's cool. It's a really cool kind of you know, common sense thing that they did with planes like this. And it just looks really nice. Eyebrow definitely has the more accurate, more uh, faithful paint job to a plane of this type. I really do enjoy it. I, I'm really missing those up there. Uh, I might even be able to take them from like a, a model or something. I'll probably just end up 3D printing them at some point. Uh, fingers crossed, I'll get to it someday. But honestly, it doesn't take away from it too much. I still really enjoy it, and thankfully not having the guns, you know, I don't even put them on this mode anyway, doesn't really hurt me too much. So, I love the, the P plus 10 on the side, don't really know what that means. I don't know what these markings are on the back, but they look really cool. He's just really awesome, man. I love it. This is such an awesome vehicle mode. And in my opinion, it looks even cooler with Power Dive. Now, granted, it does not have the white on the bottom. It does not have that accuracy. But, you know, you can see this is like a night ops kind of plane. You know, this is something where, you know, the, the, this is uh, this is what they'll bring out on night missions. It says DC on it. Uh, not sure what that really means. But, hey, Decepticon logo, loud and proud there. I love the shark. That shark looks so cool right there. I love the red cockpit. Uh, I love the, uh, the little splashes of gold here and there with the silver. The purple's not too overwhelming. Uh, I think it's the purple and the red that kind of that kind of throw it off. So, you know, maybe the red might be what's the most garish. Heck, you could probably, if you want to kit bash, take the propellers from a highbrow and put them on power dive. Probably would look a little more accurate. Uh, I love both of these, man. This vehicle mode is so cool. This brings me back to a video game that my brother and I played as kids called Airfix Dogfighter where you were, you know, Airfix makes model planes. 
And in that game, it's basically Toy Story, but with model planes. You know, the family goes away on a vacation or they're moving. I think they're moving. And all the model planes come to life and start dogfighting. <laughs> it's really cool. And so this kind of reminds me of that. It's super cool to have these kind of planes. You know, I love I love toys of all sorts. And growing up, I had tons of planes and cars and things. And I don't really care about those. But my, my Transformers collecting allows me to get in touch with those interests. Those vague toy interests that I had as kid. As, as kid. As singular kid. And uh, have a have one that turns into a robot while I'm at it. You know, like model cars. I had plenty of model cars in my house growing up. And now I have Transformers alternators. You know, it, it's a good way to kind of keep the keep the tradition going love these absolutely love these so you may have picked up some hints throughout the video on which one's my favorite i love them both i truly do but i think i'm gonna have to give it to power dive i think he's my favorite not just because my sample is complete here let's go up just a little bit so we can get a better look because they're very flat in their vehicle mode uh not just because power dive's complete but because I just prefer the colors. I think anything's cooler when it's a Decepticon. I love the shark. Uh, even though I love the accuracy of this, and I will I will not get rid of this because I have Power Dive. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I love them both. They're great. And they definitely have a place in my collection. Hunt for the Decepticons was an amazing line, and it brought us some awesome molds from characters that never even appeared in any movie, any show, maybe had a cameo in the comic just to give the toy some sort of background. It's awesome, awesome stuff. Hunt for the Decepticons was an amazing line, and I'm kind of surprised I slept on stuff like that for the longest time as a Transformers collector. I guess I was mostly focused on getting the characters from the movies and the shows, and then now that I have almost all of them, I'm looking back at Hunt for the Decepticons stuff and you know, Revenge of the Fallen Scout class, Dark of the Moon Human Alliance. I'm starting to get into those finally. Uh, the, the ones that were like kind of scout class that were just nobodies. There were some pretty cool toys in that line. And Hunt for the Decepticons, in my opinion, was the king of that line. The absolute king of bringing us cool stuff that had no fictional background whatsoever. Highbrow and Power Dive are amazing toys. They're amazing. The E means excellent, and the amazing means amazing. They're amazing toys. <laughs> Go and get yourself at least one of them. It is definitely worth it. Uh, I love them. Great. The transformation, mwah. Both modes, mwah. A little quirky, a little bit, but I think the quirks really add to some charm, and they actually genuinely contribute to the success of the vehicle mode as well. So there we go, guys. There's my review of Hunt for the Decepticons, Highbrow, and GDO Power Dive. Love them. Absolutely love them. Alrighty, guys. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. Special shout out to channel members as well. Thank you all so much for the continued support. Alrighty, there we go. Have a great one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Yeah, I spit a little bit. Ugh.